All right, we are back to Health Matters. Maury Eskenazi and Shannon O'Kelly. Uh, we are joined by Dr. Jay Estrada, internal medicine physician from Pacific Medical Centers in Linwood. Thanks so much for coming on. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. I love when we have a doctor on that looks like a million years younger than us. <laughs> yeah, they're getting that way, aren't they? I know. I mean, remember, we're baby boomers. I never thought I'd be that way. <laughs> yeah. I never thought I'd be that way. We're, hap- we're happy to have you here. We're going to talk about... Uh, Talk about internal medicine, right? We're mm-hmm. going to talk about coughing and lungs and uh, bronchitis, bronchitis and pneumonia and what? all those. Here's things Here's a great we question. About. I was going to ask why do I want to ask why do we cough? But, but my second question was why do we have to turn our heads and cough? That's, <laughs> that's <laughs> not another doctor, that's, another segment. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> so why do we cough? Well, yeah, the turn the head co- uh, cough story. I'm not going to get into. Okay. But, um, you <laughs> know, Can I tell you something quick? Yeah, sure. I said that to my doctor when I was a kid, and he was like a million years old. And I go, why do I have to turn my head and cough? And his answer was, I don't want you to cough in my face. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, so coughing is actually, it's it's a reflex that is kind of a, the body's defense mechanism against irritants in the throat. And it's triggered by kind of these receptors in the back of the throat, some are in the lungs, some are other places, but most most often in the back of the throat and in the lungs. And if a certain irritant, whether that's a chemical irritant that's heat or cold or um, something that's acidic, uh, maybe something that's bacterial or viral that can cause a cough to be triggered. Um, and it can also be physical, like something like a mucus secretion triggering something in the back of the throat, which will cause that cough to kind of help keep the stuff out out from places that's not supposed to be. Yeah, so the cough is I mean, the cough is basically a built-in mechanism that your body has kind of wired into it when that those reflexes or those receptors are irritated. Exactly. You cough to expel. You're pushing that out, out of your body, right? Yep, yep. I mean, trying to keep it from going anywhere further down into the lung passages. Yep, ideally it's to keep anything from even making it down there, but if there is something down there, it's also to kind of help get that out. Yeah, yeah. And, and for me, a cough is the start of all hell breaking loose. You know what I mean? You get like a slight cough, and then you get the sniffles, and then that like turns into uh Yeah, usually when I, when I start, or probably you too, when you start noticing a cough, you have kind of an irritation in the back of the throat. Yeah. Your throat just kind of tickles. It feels like it tickles, and you kind of cough. And, and sometimes these coughs, I mean, they, you can't even control it. You can't stop that chronic cough yep. where you get a headache and your back hurts because you're coughing so much, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, but, I, but I mean, initially, I mean, sometimes that cough doesn't necessarily turn into an infection because it, maybe it's doing its job. Maybe right. It did get that irritant out of there. Right, right. And what do you suggest? Um, is cough medicine good? Yeah, is cough is, medicine good? Is there any good, good, good cough, cough medicine out there? There, there is. There's a lot of good over-the-counter things, but before you know, you send pe- before I send people running to the pharmacy. You know, there are a lot of non-pharmaceutical things you can do, and the number one most important thing that I tend to push on patients is that they should start drinking some fluid. Right. Um, you know, that's one of the most common things we hear. But but why fluid? Um, and the main reason for that is number one, it acts to kind of literally wash out whatever's in the back of the throat or in the lungs, kind of. Um, to move it out of that area and keep it from irritating you. Um, but secondly, uh, when you're well hydrated, your mucus secretions are mm-hmm. not quite as thick. So that allows your body to be able to, when you do cough, it allows you to get that stuff out of there and get that junk out of there. Hot yeah. fluids, like, you know, tea, you're yep. supposed to, yeah. Hot fluids themselves can kind of soothe the back of the throat. And whether, I mean, whether there's, there's an irritant back there or not, that hot fluid can kind of help to dissolve it. Maybe a little honey in there too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can do that. You can do a hot toddy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, also, like throat lozenges, cough, uh-huh. you know, cough, uh, cough drops. You know, anything that has menthol in it. Um, those sort of things tend to soothe the back of the throat and make the cough receptors in the back of the throat not not be so irritated so easily. Okay, so you have this cough and you're drinking fluids and you've uh, you've called. You know, so, so I've had this and I've called my doctor to go in and they go, "Don't even come in. Just start drinking fluids and stuff." Mm-hmm. <coughs> So there you go. There you have that was a cough. There's a cough. That was acting. Thank you. <laughs> so like a week and a half later, that cough is still there and it's getting worse. So then what do I do? So, so after I, we usually tell patients, you know, first try something over the counter, um, if those conservative measures aren't working. So over the counter, um, you can get uh, the most common one is called dextromethorphan, which is the DM in a lot of cough and cold preparations. It acts as a cough suppressant. It keeps those cough receptors from being so sensitive, you know, you, you don't want them to be so sensitive. So that every little thing ticks them off to the point that, you know, it causes a cough. So it's a pretty fairly, you know, safe medication to take out there. Um, and it's in a lot of cough 
cough and cold preparations. That's the first thing I usually recommend. Um, another thing is if your cough is pretty, yeah, you can tell that it's being triggered by post nasal drip, or if you have really bad runny sinuses, the next thing you can do is use a nasal steroid. One of the most common ones is fluticasone. Uh, one of the brands is Flonase. Flonase. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Exactly. There you so go. It's I back. Hate the smell of that. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> back. It's not the worst, yeah. but it does its job. It, right. It, if you if you use it every day. Um, while you're having these symptoms, it can kind of dry out the you, nasal passages. You know the thing about Flonase that just drives me crazy? Um, it, I'm I'm an instant gratification <laughs> guy. It doesn't work instantly. Yeah. That's why I became addicted to, uh, what was that? The nasal, Afrin? Afrin. That's why I became addicted <laughs> to Afrin. But that's a whole different show. Yeah. yeah. That, yeah. And that's not one we like to use. Yeah. 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 So we usually do the, the Flonase um, or Fluticasone. The generic is just as good as the brand, in my opinion. Um, and you try that if if your post nasal drip is a big po- uh, part of the cough. The other thing is the decongestants like pseudoephedrine, which uh-huh. is pseudofed behind the counter. Right. Um, you can ask for it from the pharmacist. Uh, that is a nasal decongestant, but you have to be careful with that one because that can raise the blood pressure. All right. Right. Um, so right. if you have high blood pressure to begin with, that's something you should be avoiding. Because they have low blood pressure medications. They do, too. and typically yeah. that that's uh, for example, Corsetin is right. a common brand yep. which has the high blood pressure one. That's dextromethorphan. So yeah. essentially, okay. it's just telling. Okay. You, you can take that, but not the not the pseudo effect. When does this become bronchitis? Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. When does when does what's the difference between a yeah. cough and bronchitis? Yeah, so again, a cough can you know be triggered by any irritant, but bronchitis itself is um, an infection of the lower airways, uh, and it's the part of the lungs that are responsible for air transfer. Um, and the, the large airways they're called bronchi, thus bronchitis. Uh, and when they're infected, they start to, uh, the body starts to react by sending neutrophils, which are kind of your body's defense cells, mm-hmm. over to that area. And it causes, uh, that reaction causes uh, secretions. And so when those secretions are being made, they are triggering those cough receptors and therefore you cough. Um, and, you know, bronchitis episode is normally caused by viruses. The overwhelming majority is caused by viruses. So an antibiotic isn't usually going to do anything for it. But if after, you know, the, 10 to 14 day mark, you know, you're, if, as long as you're not feeling too bad, um, you know, if you've given it a good, the good card college try and, you know, try the over kind of things at that point, I would probably see the doctor about it, but I would give it a good 10 to 14 days to try and give your body the chance to get it out on its own. And then pneumonia, when does, um, does bronchitis, if it's not treated, can it progress to pneumonia or uh, what's the deal with pneumonia? Cause that's a bad situation. Yeah. Bronchitis can turn into pneumonia, but oftentimes pneumonia can just come on on its own. And the difference with pneumonia is that it's an infection a little deeper in the lungs. It's in the, what we call the lung parenchyma, Mm -hmm. which is the area of the lungs that's responsible for gas exchange. So that's where, you know, carbon dioxide is exchanged for oxygen in the blood. And when you get an infection there, um, that actually necessitates uh, medical treatment because even if it's, even if it's viral, there are a lot more bacteria that cause pneumonia than bronchitis. Have, have you ever had that. that before, pneumonia? I have not. But I was I in, mean, I was in the hospital. It. No, you don't I want I was in it, the yeah. hospital for like a week with pneumonia. Yeah. Well, what, really? I mean, yeah. it, it, from an anatomical standpoint, a physiological standpoint, um, Dr. Estrada was describing deep in the lungs. That's where the gas is exchanged. Mm-hmm. And if that area fills with water, you can't exchange gas across the water vapor exactly. or barrier. And, you don't you don't oxygenate your blood. You basically suffocate in your in your fluid. And that's why it's dangerous because more likely than in bronchitis, that's going to impair your gas exchange and impair your ability to oxygenate. Right. And is that is that really dangerous for for the young and the old too? Right. It can be for both, yeah. but certainly more with the old right. because I mean those people don't necessarily have the ability to cough up those secretions quite as mm. much. Much. But a lot of times, like even as I mean, a flu, that's I mean, a lot of times when you hear about a flu and deaths from the flu, my understanding is a lot of time the flu, you know, your body's trying to fight it off. You develop a pneumonia. Uh, yes, can, it, you can. You can. And actually, the flu is one thing is one of those things where, you know, I've, I've kind of been talking about how you should wait. And if your cough isn't um, interfering with your ability to complete your daily activities, you can wait and see right. if you can turn around on your own. That's m- mostly what we re- recommend. But with flu, so if if you have symptoms that are similar to the flu, so your symptoms come on very quickly, you're, ha- you're feeling really malaise, mm-hmm. very high fevers, um, muscle aches and pains, you should actually get in sooner because if we test you for the flu and you're positive, the medication for the flu, um, the an- specific antiviral for the flu, um, is only efficacious within the first 48 hours. That's of the Tamiflu. And that's efficacious Tamiflu. means works. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. If, if you okay. pass that point, I'm going to start using that efficacious. <laughs> by the way. You can use hey, that. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> they, 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 I, that's why I paid for medical yeah, school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you deserve <laughs> those. Yeah, words. yeah, you, you, gotta, <laughs> you can use it all day that. long. Yeah, yeah. That's um, Tamiflu is 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 that, and then that pneumonias. Hey, but we were talking about pneumonia. Mm-hmm. What do you recommend as an internal medicine physician? Because there's pneumococcal pneumonia, but it, <clears throat> is it 55 and older? You should get a vaccination for. It? What is the rule? Is it on older that? than that? Well, it's, 60 or something. I don't yeah. know what it is. It's older than that. It's at um, age 65 that you start the pneumococcal vaccination, but it really depends on other other uh, medical conditions um, that you might have. It can, you can have indication for younger than that. Uh-huh. So um, it's a conversation you should have with your doctor depending on what medical conditions you have. Yeah, I tried to get that, and they said I was too young. Did it was they? the greatest day of my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they yeah. did. I tried to get that. Yeah, well, I mean, um, you know, the biggest thing with uh, the cough and, and bronchitis and pneumonia and fever and I think we all want to kind of think it's going to go away. Mm-hmm. And is there a certain time period as a physician? I mean, you just mentioned if you're, you've got sudden onset and you feel fluish, you should get in. But what about pneumonia signs? I mean, is it just short of breath? How do you know pneumonia versus heart attack or cardiac arrest? Well, that, well those are a lot of complex yeah, diagnoses. Right, yeah. But yeah, that's why you paid for yeah. medical school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I, would say, <laughs> I would say at the 7 to 10-day to point, if you don't feel like – you're at least turning around. Okay. That's kind of the point at which I would say it's worth going to see the doctor because if you're coming in prior to that and you're still able to function, we're probably going to say, hey, give your body a yeah, chance, chance to yeah, fight it right. off because we don't want to be overloading you with antibiotics. But see, that's how I am. I, I just, it will go away, right? I'm, oh, this is going to go see, away. See, that's, that's and, what and I was just, doing I mean, this. Uh, that's what guy, That's what men do. That's what men do. <laughs> I go, how you feel? I feel great. I'm, I'm dripping wet. <laughs> yeah, I've yeah, got 103 like, temperatures. Yeah, totally. It's going to go away. I think, yeah. I think I feel really good. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, drink fluids, mm-hmm. wash your hands. Um, I can't, you know what? I was telling my wife the other day, we were out in public. There's no way I could wear one of those masks that people wear when they're not <laughs> feeling good. There's no way. I feel like an idiot doing that. Well, you that. can get them where they have different pictures on them and Still, stuff. Still, so I would you, never do you that. You can kind of be cool. You know, it's, it's really a, a difference just in culture over in, in the Asian countries. Oh, right, it's, yeah. It's common, it's common sense. It's yeah. like if you're coughing and you're not wearing a mask, like what are you doing to the community? Exactly. Yeah, I was watching, um, yeah. I, I was watching the Olympics, you know? Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. That's and, where I saw I mean, that I mean, there were a lot of people in the audience with masks. Mm-hmm. I'm a big... You know, you, you just—I mean, you got—you you, gotta—you gotta be hygienic. I mean, in right. today's world. Well, I mean, also, and then if you have kids, well, you're—that's oh, too yeah. bad. Petri dish. <laughs> yeah, you're sick for years until they're out of school. Doctor J. Estrada, uh, Pacific Medical Center in Linwood. Um, it, website to get a hold of you. Yeah, so you can just go to www.pacificmedicalcenters.org. Um, and all, all of our office information is on there, along with the rest of Pacific Medical Center. Let's, ask, could, let's ask more if he remembers the word he learned tonight. The, <laughs> effica- efficacious. <laughs> is it effi- what is it again? I think that's in French, actually. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> efficacious <laughs> play. Efficacious. You know, efficacious. Like <laughs> Doc, thanks so much for coming on with us. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, we're yeah. taking a break. It's Health Matters brought to you by IRG Physical and Hand Therapy. This is Fox Sports 1380 FM 95.3.